Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Brent and welcome to part 16 of my tutorial series on how to create the game Super Mario Brothers. So in this tutorial, we're actually going to talk about the anatomy of a Goomba. And basically, we're going to be creating a Goomba enemy sprite and moving him around the screen. We probably won't be interacting with him yet, but if you're interested in this, go ahead and stick with me. So the first thing we're going to do is do a little refactoring on our play screen here. We're going to add two new methods, get world and get map. So public uh, tiled map, um, get map, and it is going to return our map. And then public world, get world, which will return our world. Oops, return world. So inside our constructor up here where we create our B2 world, we're going to just uh, give it this instead of the map and the world. Now inside the B2 world, we can say we're just going to take in a play screen and call it screen. And then we can say, we'll bring that in and we'll say world world equals screen dot get world and tiled map map equals screen dot get map. Now we're just going to go ahead and down here where we create our bricks and coins, we're just going to pass the screen instead of the map in the world object. Uh, just doing some cleaning up here. We'll go to the brick and object here and say it accepts a play screen called screen. And uh, then it's going to pass that to the super interactive tile object screen. And then we'll do the same with coin. It's going to take in a play screen called screen. And it is also going to pass that to the interactive tile object screen. And then the interactive tile object we have to change here as well. Uh, play screen, screen. And we'll just say this dot world equals screen dot get world. And this dot map equals screen dot get map and finally mario doesn't need to take in the world anymore he'll just get his world from screen dot get world and then we'll just take it out of the play screen when we create mario it'll just be this so now that we're done with refactoring and sorry about that let's go ahead and create a new java class called enemy an enemy will extends the sprite uh, libgdx object there. Oops. Let's see right there. Import class. And then we'll say public enemy, haha. Ha, that will take in a play screen called screen and a float x and float y for position. And then we'll say uh, this dot world equals screen dot get world. This dot screen equals screen. And then uh, set position to X and Y. And then let's create these variables world, world, um, and play screen, screen. And we'll set these as protected as well. Protected. And let's make sure we bring in our world. There we go. So each enemy will need a box 2D body. We're just going to make that public body, B2 body. We're going to make enemy an abstract class since we won't be making any instances of it. Abstract class. And then down here, we're going to say protected. Each enemy has to define itself in our box 2D world. So we're going to say protected abstract void define enemy. And then we'll implement that in our Goomba class. So let's go ahead and create our Goomba class here. Goomba that uh, extends uh, the enemy class. And then, oops, there we go. Let's implement methods define enemy. And let's also generate our constructor here. There we go.
Now we're just gonna go to our Mario sprite here and go ahead and copy our Mario definition. So we can do this a little bit faster. Now pasting it inside our define enemy inside of our Goomba class, we can edit it. Now here we're going to change the category bits to enemy bit. We'll have to go back and change that inside of our Mario Bros class. We're actually gonna refactor default bit uh, to be named as a ground uh, bit. And then we're also going to uh, make two new ones, the enemy bit. So let's go ahead and just copy this, paste it and paste it. This one will be 32 and this one will be 64. Um, and then we'll call this one uh, object bit. This will be for like pipes and stuff like that. And uh, then we'll call this one enemy bit. So let's make our Goomba collide with other enemies. Um, so we'll or it with Mario Bros. Dot enemy bit and also objects Mario Bros. Dot object bit. Now inside of our B2 world creator, when we create our pipes, uh, when um, we create our fixture definition, we're gonna say f def dot filter dot category bits equals mario bros dot object bit and this is so when an enemy collides with a pipe he can basically turn around so it, it can differentiate between colliding with the ground if he falls on the ground he doesn't want to uh, reverse direction but when he hits a pipe or some kind of collidable object uh, that's in his way he'll reverse direction Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our animation here for our Goomba. We're gonna need three variables, a private float uh, state time to keep track of it, um, a private uh, animation called walk animation, and then a private uh, array of texture regions and we're gonna call that frames. So let's take a look at our Goomba animation. It's just two frames, a left alternating left and right feet here. And so going back to Goomba, let's create our frames here. So frames equals new array of texture regions. And then we'll create a four int i equals zero, i is less than two, i plus plus. Um, frames dot add new texture region the first parameter is our texture region that we're gonna get it from so that is in our screen dot get atlas dot find region and the region's name is Goomba the next is the Y or X coordinate so I times 16 then the Y coordinate, then how big the sprite is, uh, 16 by 16. And so there we go. Next, let's go ahead and add our frames to our animation. So walk animation equals new animation, um, 0.4F, um, and we'll give it our frames. We may need to adjust that time later. And then we'll say our state time, state time equals zero. So let's set up an update method for our Goomba, public void update, and it takes in a float delta time. We'll increase our state timer by our delta time, so state time plus equals delta time. Now let's set the position of our sprite, so set position to our box 2D body dot position dot x minus the width of the sprite because this will offset it a little bit. Um, so minus the get width divided by two. So move it over half the width of the sprite and then box 2d body dot get position dot y minus and get height divided by two, which will move it down half the um, the width of the sprite or half the height of it. Now we can set our region here to our walk animation dot get keyframe and give it our state time here. 
few little cleanup things here. We're also going to pass this true to say it's a looping animation. Let's go to our enemy class here. We'll say uh, at the end of here, we'll need to define our enemy. We forgot to do that. Now let's go to our play screen and temporarily we're just gonna add a single enemy to our play screen. Eventually we'll use tile to define where our enemies actually are. So we'll just say private uh, Goomba, uh, Goomba. This will just be a temporary one. And then down here we'll say Goomba equals new Goomba. Um, and we'll pass it a um, this, then a 0.32 and a 0.32f. This would be 32 by 32 divided by Mario Bros. ppm, but to save time, we're just going to do that for now. Like I said, this is all just temporary. And then in our update method, we'll say right below our player update, we'll say our Goomba needs to be updated um, with our delta time. And then in our render method, we need to draw our Goomba. So right below our player, we'll say Goomba.draw and give it our game.batch. Last thing we need to do is go ahead and inside of our Goomba class to set the bounds of it so it knows how big our anim or sprite actually is. Uh, first is the X and Y coordinates. So get X, get Y. And then this is a 16 by 16, but we also need to divide it by Mario Bros. ppm, and also over here, divided by Mario Bros. ppm, and then let's go ahead and test it. So you can see right now he's kind of colliding with Mario, uh, but Mario also walks through tubes, so let's go ahead and fix this stuff. So inside of our Mario Bros. class, I set this to 62, which is not a um, power of two, that would be 64, oops. Um, going back to our Goomba class, let's go ahead and have uh, officially say he can collide with Mario um, dot Mario bit. And then inside of our Mario class, let's say that he can collide with enemies, Mario Bros dot enemy bit. And he can also uh, collide with a game object. So Mario Bros dot, uh, yeah, what was it? object bit. So running in now, Mario still collides with uh, the Goomba and uh, we collide with tubes. And of course you can see that the Goomba has a walk animation. So we are well on our way uh, to making a active uh, enemy for Mario. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. I'm sure in this one you may have to rewind and watch some parts because we moved a little quickly and we did a lot of refactoring in a lot of different classes. Um, but if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and post them below. I'm pretty good about getting back to everybody. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, but most importantly, please share it if you do like it. I'm trying to grow this channel and I appreciate all you guys' feedback and, and support. Uh, if you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. I give you two big thumbs up for that. I appreciate all you watching and I'll catch you guys next time.